This is Dr. Franziska Elmer. She is dedicated to our planet's health with a particular affinity towards coral reefs. Coral reefs support thousands of marine species, global industries, including tourism and fisheries, and provide additional coastal protection from storms. However, coral reefs are facing significant threats, which puts them, and all which depends on them, at risk. Luckily, there's a lot we can do to make a difference. In this video, Dr. Elmer will unpack key information about corals and give her advice on what we can do to support coral health. So my name is Francisca Elmer, or people call me Fran. I'm from Switzerland and I'm a marine biologist. Switzerland, as you may know, is landlocked. It's kind of hard to get interested in marine biology in Switzerland because you're not going to go jump in the ocean. But luckily on family vacations, we would actually go to the ocean. I would go snorkeling with my dad. I would snorkel until my lips are blue because I loved it so much. You first go in the water with your mask on and there's all those colors. There's so many different animals. They're all like swimming around, doing something and it's a hustle and a bustle. That's how I really got interested in this cool world down there and learned about maybe I want to do this as a job. There's a lot of productivity on the coral reef, but there's actually not many resources coming in. Productivity of an ecosystem pretty much means how much food is produced, how much mouths can be fed. And the coral reef is one of the most productive ecosystems that there is in the world. So they're really, really resourceful and recycle everything. So it starts inside the coral. The coral itself is an animal. So a lot of people think, oh, it looks like a rock. It looks like a plant, it doesn't move, so it can't be an animal. It's actually an animal. And the coral has a little algae inside, which is called a Susantelli. It's a tiny, tiny algae. And that algae makes most of the food for the coral. And then the coral uses that food not only to grow and to reproduce, it also uses it to make the calcium carbonate skeleton of the coral, the actual rock below the coral. That's what's actually making that structure you see on the reef. Without the corals, you wouldn't have that structure and you probably wouldn't have any of those fish and those invertebrates living on the reef. So when you have a reef that's not doing well and there's less coral on it than before or maybe no coral anymore, that means the reef stops growing and it becomes flatter. That means there will be less fish living there and less invertebrates, which ultimately will affect tourism because people don't want to go there. And it will also affect fisheries because there's less fish to catch. But another really important part is that the reef is actually the first barrier against storms on many coastal places. So when a storm comes by, whether it's a big hurricane or a smaller storm, the reef will take a lot of that energy from the water and protect the island from it. So if you don't have the reef, you will have a lot more damage on land um, when a hurricane or another storm comes by. One of the big environmental concerns corals are facing is climate change. What's happening to corals with climate change is, first of all, the ocean is warming up. 
which leads to more coral bleaching. So when the ocean is too hot, then the coral will expel the algae inside of it because the relationship doesn't work out anymore. And the coral will be completely white because the algae is actually what gives the color to the coral. That also means they're losing their food source. So if they can't get algae back, so if the temperature stays too hot, too long, then the coral will die. The other thing that happens with climate change is ocean acidification. So that's when the pH of the water gets lower, so the water gets more acidic in the ocean. That's a problem for the coral because they make calcium carbonate skeleton and making that is a lot harder if the pH is lower. So the coral will grow slower and it will be a lot harder for them to actually make their skeleton and the structure that we really need. But also, we just got a new disease, um, stony coral tissue loss disease here in South Caicos. It's fairly new overall. It started in 2014 in Florida and just moved away from Florida within the last year. So there's a lot that is not known about this disease. We're actually the first group who instead of taking pictures to see how fast the disease moves along the coral, like taking a picture today, take one again next week and see where that edge of the disease moved. We're actually making a 3D model of it, either of a single coral or of a large area of the reef. And instead of having this coral, which is not flat, and you're making it flat and taking the area or the distance, we can measure the area or the distance right here on the coral in the 3D model. So you get a more precise way of measuring how fast it actually spreads. That means taking the video we took on the water, putting it into a bunch of pictures, putting the pictures through a program, it makes you the 3D model. And you can then, on the computer, make a lot of measurements, which would be really hard to do on the water. Climate emergency is real, it's a crisis, and we have to start acting now to do something about it. What we do between now and 2030 is extremely important. It may become the most important time in human history, and it's kind of exciting to be part of it. It's also kind of scary to be part of it because there's a lot of responsibility laying on us who are um, alive right now and can actually do something. So think about what you can do. If you ever have the joy of visiting a reef, make sure you are very careful of where you kick, where you put your hands, where you stand. Because as you know, those corals are not rocks, they're animals and they're very fragile. So you really don't want to hurt them by kicking them or standing on them or touching them. Another thing you can do, especially in places where there's a lot of tourists, um, use reef safe sunscreen because we found out that the chemicals in sunscreen can actually hurt the corals. And if you aren't at a coral reef, you can still do a lot. You can uh, make sure that your emissions go down and you're doing something against climate change. You can look into your bank, see if they are investing into fossil fuels. A lot of banks are, but there are banks who don't invest in fossil fuels and you could move your money over there and make a huge impact. The other thing you could do is, um, if you think about going on vacation, as you probably know, flying has a lot of impact, a lot of emissions. So instead of going on two small vacations a year, flying, go on one longer one. 
you still have the same amount of vacation days. It's just you're only flying once, which means you have your emissions. Because it is such a big problem with a thousand little solutions to it, almost every skill there is can help solve this problem. You don't have to be a marine biologist to solve this problem. You can be any type of profession. You can even be a little child and still be helping solving this problem, which is really cool because we can all help. Thank you.